Banana. Yummy. <laughs> and this word's almost the same in English and Italian. In English it's banana. In Italian, what is it, mummy? Banana. <laughs> Do you want to get back up again? Are you stuck? There you go. Banana. <laughs> We had some comments from people suggesting that we should teach Emma both languages, Italian and English, and that's exactly what we're doing. Um, I always talk to her in Italian and Chris always talk to her in English. And um, yeah, also since when she was in my tummy. And also now that we're gonna try to put some cartoon and hopefully she's gonna be enjoying it. Uh, once we put in English and one we, once we put it the same episode in Italian. So, you're going to speak both languages, aren't you? Uh, this is just a normal kids DVD and very fortunately it's got both English and Italian. So we can just switch between the two and Emma can time. watch it in both yeah. languages, can't this you, Missy? This time is the English time. While we're having lunch, we're watching this sailing YouTube channel. They're called Valela Sail. Uh, se qualcuno di voi parla italiano, uh, andate a vederli. They're from Italy. Here we are then, back in Chatham Maritime Marina. We've been to London for a day and it was really good, wasn't it? We've, yes. We kind of feel a bit more mentally refreshed now. And here are a few shots of our trip in London. Now I'm going to take Emma for a nap. This is our list of the 10 priority jobs to do on board. There are probably about a thousand items on the actual big to-do list of everything, but we've picked out the top 10. 
These are ordered into priorities for us to be able to leave a marina and be a little bit more independent to start doing passages, maybe spending some days at anchor. And this is the order that we've decided to do the jobs to allow us to do that. So number one, shore power. We have seen, or I have seen some uh, evidence of overheating on one of the pins on the shore power connector, the inlet coming into the boat. And that can be dangerous because that's before the circuit breaker on the boat. So there is a potential fire risk there. It's nowhere near that stage yet, but to um, nip it in the bud, that's only gonna get worse if the pin is, is kind of damaged and corroded. So that's getting changed. I've ordered that and we have received it. So it was quite cheap, about 14 pounds for a new inlet. That's the first thing on my to-do list. Number two, fix a leak. I'm gonna talk you through this leak because it gave me quite a scare initially. Those of you who've been following our channel will know this, but I recently replaced the sail drive seal, the black seal just there. That would let a lot of water into the boat if it should fail, so they should be replaced once every seven years. Ours was the original 26 years old, so I replaced it. And uh, one of the things that I checked when we launched was that we weren't having water entering into the boat in this area, uh, which we weren't. And then a couple of days after we'd been afloat, I looked in here again, because I'd already checked it and it was all good. And I saw quite a lot of water. So I thought, oh no, nightmare. So I started to look around this seal to, uh, to double check for leaks. And I could see that there were no leaks, thank goodness. So then I kind of basically worked my way along looking for evidence of water ingress. I could see that over in this corner, there's a little bulkhead running up and down here. I could see that the water was coming from that side of the bulkhead. So I knew the leak was on this side of the boat somewhere aft of here. Generally, when you get a leak, it's from a fitting rather than from a hose. So I did chase the hoses along, but I was especially looking out for fittings and I went right into the far corner of the boat. We have a boiler and one of the fittings on the boiler is dripping. So only when the boat's water pump is turned on, we get a constant drip, which then runs down into this bilge. That will be, I hope, a very easy fix. I'll just unscrew the fitting from the boiler, wrap it in PTFE tape, and then screw it back in. That should be that done. The next one is an engine overhaul. I quickly worked on the engine to get some cooling water flowing before we went in the water, but it was always my intention to do a proper engine overhaul, um, change all the filters, change the oil, um, and also the distribution pipe. Basically, when we came here from our last location, it was a short trip on the river. We were going against the current. I was using quite a lot of revs and we had an intermittent overheating alarm, which was a little bit stressful. So I'm gonna remove the copper water distribution pipe from the cylinder head and clean it out. I'm gonna remove the manifold, clean all that up. I'm gonna remove the thermostat and clean all that up. So just go over the whole engine and make sure that everything is hunky-dory before we head elsewhere. The next one, test the outboard. We have bought an electric outboard, very cheap. I've got a very cool way of powering it, I believe, but this is all a little bit experimental, so you'll have to wait and see how that pans out. The next one, steaming light, that's gone, it's not working, so I need to replace that. The next one, showers. We have hot water and pressurized water on this boat, but we don't have any pull-out showers. So I'm gonna install at least one of those, maybe up to three. Russell and I are in discussions about how many we should fit. Um, I may also need to fit some kind of uh, bilge pump system to get rid of the wastewater. We will see. There are other ways of doing that, simpler ways, but we'll see. The next one, install the inverter. We have an inverter, a very cheap one, 2000 watts. Um, so nice and powerful. We'll probably make a video about this at some point, but for now it's attached with crocodile clips, which is not professional over the longer term, so I want to fit that properly uh, and install it permanently onto the boat. Number eight, uh, solar panels and charge controller. I also need solar panel mounts before I fit the solar panels, so there will be videos about this. I'm gonna do a similar setup to the last boat. I'm gonna make a solar panel arch type affair with no welding using fittings with grub screws, which can be very strong. That's another job to do, a big one. We need solar panels to keep us powered for long periods at anchor. The next one, VHF. During our journey here, the VHF wasn't working properly as well. It was intermittent. So I'll have to look into that. And number 10, we need a fridge. Uh, we don't have a fridge here. We have a cool box and it's hot and food isn't lasting as long as we would like. So Rosella is very keen to fit a fridge and I will oblige her. There we are. 
Now let's crack on and get them done. I've removed the inlet and you can see the heat damage here, especially on the live cable there. You can see the insulation has been somewhat toasted. There's enough cable length in there for me to snip these back and start with some nice non-damaged insulation. Okay, I've tinned these three cables now and tightened the pins onto them. And just taking a moment here just to check the resistance. I've put the multimeter onto the ohm setting and just check what we're getting now. 0 0.2 ohms just from the, the leads themselves. So if I go from the live to the live, 0.3. Yeah, 0.2, so that's the same as it was before. Check that one, same again. And the earth. Bit of wiggling. Just a second then, Matt. There we go, 0.2. If you have a higher reading there, then you can have hot spots, and then we'd be back to square one because you can get high temperature, which can burn the insulation. Right, do you want to go and see Emma, darling? Emma. I've finished fitting the new shore power inlet. And there's just time to pause and enjoy the sunset, which is, uh, it's always a beautiful sight here with the marina. So it's worth taking a few minutes out of your day to appreciate this moment. There's no rest for the wicked though. I've just cut off the old connector, which was heat damaged as well. And I'm going to fit a new one. I don't think we're ever going to get tired of the view through these little porthole windows that we've got. Brilliant. So today is a new day and I'm about to start repairing the leak on our boiler. Here is our boiler. It lives inside this locker. So I'll be probably spending quite a lot of time today contorted into extremely strange positions to get myself in to work on this. Basically down there I've seen that there is something leaking but before I start disconnecting anything to rectify that there's a couple of things that I need to do. First I'm going to knock off the power to the boiler, then I'm going to get rid of all the hot water. I'm now going to turn off the water pump, there we go, but we're not finished yet and to explain why I've drawn a little schematic. Here is a simple boat water schematic with a hot water system included. This doesn't include everything. Uh, there may be a filter on the inlet. There should definitely be a filter here before the pump. And on our boat, for example, we've got a second tank. So there's a whole bunch of changeover valves and things fitted before the pump here. Anyway, before here, you've got low pressure water. After the pump, you've got high pressure water, relatively high pressure. And usually the pump operates on demand. So it's got a pressure sensor in it. When it senses that the pressure in this side of the system has dropped, the pump activates, it comes on, it starts pumping, and that increases the pressure again to keep up with demand. The other important thing to note is that there will nearly always be an accumulator in the system. So that's this. Basically, if you imagine that this is a diaphragm and you've got air under pressure here, then as the pressure in the water side increases, this diaphragm moves upwards and compresses and you get a volume of water into the accumulator and the air that you're compressing then acts as an energy store. There are a few different reasons that accumulators are fitted. They damp out pulsations from the pump. They also reduce the number of times that the pump has to cycle and it just makes for a smoother outlet of water as well. So they're, they're pretty much always fitted. Why am I telling you all this? This is important because if we hadn't done what we'd just done now and emptied the hot water, what you could have is when you go 
you switch off the water pump like I've just done now and if you don't remember about the accumulator you could end up getting quite a nasty burn because if you disconnect fittings on the boiler then you could have water under pressure which is driven by the accumulator you can have water coming out that's boiling hot and you wouldn't be able to stop it until the accumulator emptied. We're not going to have that problem today because we've just got rid of all the hot water and the final step after turning off the water pump is to release the pressure from the accumulator. So you just turn on a tap, hot or cold, it doesn't matter. And that's it, the pressure drains out and once the water stops coming out, you know the accumulator is empty. With the aid of a dry finger, I've just been poking around all the different fittings here and I've seen that the wet spot is here and it's dry on the other ones around this same T-piece there, they're dry. So I know it's this fitting, it's leaking. I don't know yet whether it's this hose tail going into the T-piece or it may be the hose going onto the hose tail, but it doesn't really matter. I'm going to remove the hose tail and put some PTFE tape around the threads and I'll also tighten the Jubilee clip there or hose clamp. I've refitted everything there and I then thoroughly dried this with some tissue paper and I've just tied a strip of tissue paper around this area and I will now go turn on the pump, pressurise the system and then an hour or two later I can have a look at this tissue paper and if it's still completely dry then we've fixed the leak. There we go, dry as a bone. Fixed. Guardando nello specchio, sei bellissima. Sì, sei bellissima. What have you bought, Chris? Well, 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 look at this. I've seen lots of sailors buy Sailrite sewing machines and I'm sure they are absolutely amazing but they're really expensive. So we have bought a very old Singer 457 Stylist. It's a metal bodied sewing machine, nice and chunky, really simple design um, and I believe these are really really strong. I've seen videos of them going through loads of layers of leather and stuff so we should hopefully be able to repair our sails and possibly the first job might be the spray hood, which is completely falling apart. <laughs> I have no idea. I've never used a sewing machine in my life. I've got no idea what I'm doing, but I'll watch some YouTube videos and learn how to do it. Then I might have a crack at that, see if I can manage to not butcher it completely. And afterwards, you know, we can do cell repairs, put new UV strips on and stuff. So this costs, hi Emma, just a minute darling. This costs 30 pounds, so ka -ching. It also comes with the original manual and the original receipt too from a very long time ago and lots of spare parts which I have no idea what any of them are. So let's give it a try. Here we are. And it does do zigzag stitches and straight stitches. So this is very, very useful. I also bought this while I was out, but I put it in my pocket, so it's not quite as pretty as it was before I set off. <laughs> Mine's bigger. Splish, splash, splish. Emma. Have a bath. Well, I'm working on the VHF at the moment. I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to rescue this old VHF set, I'm afraid. It's a shame because it's a nice, very simple bit of kit, but it's not working right now and I don't want to spend too much time trying to revive it. So we may end up getting one of the new 
uh, VHF sets that you can get now which have GPS and AIS receivers built in. They're not that expensive either and that's a lot of extra functionality to have at quite a small price so we may go down that route, we will see. But one of the good things about where we are now is we have free Wi-Fi that works really well inside the boat so whether I'm uploading a video for you guys or working I've always got so many Google searches going on when I'm working it's a great way of finding out information quickly um, so it's really good that it works here isn't it Emma? isn't it good? so we're gonna have a quick dinner that looks more like a lunch but it's fine for tonight it's a nice healthy evening meal yeah avocado and salad, salad, tomato, spread cheese and a bit of cheddar cheese. <laughs> yummy, yummy. You're going to like this too, aren't you, Emma? <laughs> As this meal was a bit too healthy, we just added some crisp. <laughs> Mm-hmm.